Welcome back to Shotoku Tech. So to recap, in this video here, we created a new DFSN root and a couple of DFSN folders. And in this video here, we talked about adding a new DFSN root target and DFSN folder targets. So now our environment's all set up with three servers that are root targets and folder targets for the namespace one and client one and server one folders. So now we're going to talk about replication groups and replication topology. I'm just going to play a game here. I'm going to click on server and I'm just going to hit replicate folder. And this is going to open the wizard because we haven't configured any replication groups or any replication topography. So I'm going to show you in the GUI what we're going to do in PowerShell later on. So because I clicked replicate server one, it opens this wizard here and it says hey the replication group name is going to be a, a co local namespace one server one and it's going to replicate server one folder so let's look and see all the servers are eligible the primary member i'm going to just choose dc1 because it makes sense to use the number one people would understand that better topology selection this was interesting when i was playing around before i started this series I could not get hub and spoke, but that's only because I only had two servers. And so it requires three or more members before you can even configure a hub and spoke. And well, that makes sense. Just want to let you know, if you only got two and you're looking to click hub and spoke, you're not going to be able to. So let's take a look now. Spoke members, hub members. I'm going to add DC1 as a hub member and the spoke members are going to be DC2 and DC3. We'll go on here and it's saying, it's just confirming, basically, these are each of the connections we're going to create for this replication group. And then we're just going to use full bandwidth, replicate continuously. You know, I'm just accepting the default here. And so here it's going to confirm it for us. All right. Now, this is interesting too. I could see where you might want to have an optional hub and then create some sort of replication between two key sites and essentially create a hub with multiple members in it because you wouldn't want your single point of failure to be this one server instead of clicking on create i'm going to hit cancel because we're going to go ahead and try to reproduce this in powershell okay so now we just stepped through what we wanted to do in the gui now we're going to use powershell make sure to look for the script in the description of this video down below we're going to create a new replication group Join it to a replicated folder, establish connections, and set the replication group membership properties. And we're going to do this in this environment of DC1, DC2, DC3 for both the client and the client one folder and the server one folder. So let's, here we go. There's our new replication group. Here we add the members. We see DC1, DC2, DC3 are all in this client one group now this is the tricky one i've spent a little time banging my head on the desk and you want to add this dfs and path to make sure that it actually gets locked into the namespace and folder structure we've already built without that it just shows as a new uh, dfs namespace path and it's not published and it's not associated with anything yeah, if you don't include this DFSN path, then it doesn't associate it with the existing namespace and folders that you've already created. Sounds rather frustrating for me to figure that out the hard way. Okay, so we're going to add a couple of connections. These are the spoke servers as the destination and the source server as the hub. Let's see if we got a piece of it that time. There we go. So we can see source computers dc1 destination computers dc2 of course it's two-way replication so you see here dc2 can replicate to dc1 here again dc1 to dc3 now we're just going to set the membership properties for this replication group now the only difference between dc1 is this primary member true i set that that way because it is the hub server and we go ahead and answer yes to that question let's do the same for dc2 and dc3 and here all we've done is essentially set up the 
membership properties in the physical world, pointing out where this namespace resides in the file system and establishing a staging path and a staging path quota. And again, like I said, Tucson VC1, we configured that as the primary member. So let's see if we were able to accomplish what we intended to set out to do. I'm going to get a little refresh here. There's client one. There's the servers. Shows the local path. That's all good so far. Here's the connections. DC one's the hub server sending to DC two and DC three. Obviously, these spoke servers can send back to DC one, so that's all good. And the replicated folders are showing correctly. Client one's the replicated folder. It's published to the namespace, and the namespace path is there. A, -A co local namespace one client one. So this is what we wanted, and we're just going to go ahead and complete these same steps for server. I'm going to go ahead and clear this so you don't have to look at the leftovers from the last meal. There we go. There's our new replication group. I'm going to add the servers to this replication group. There we go. DC123. Very good. Now again here, we want that DFSN path associated with this new DFS replicated folder. There we go. New DFS replicated folder. Server1 is assigned to group name server one and it has a dfsn path for some reason this parameter isn't validated but it was really crucial to have that otherwise i had this unpublished folder without any namespace okay so we're going to add our connections for server one replication group there we go there's our two connections dc1 to dc2 dc1 to dc3 and this is for the server one group name Last but not least, we're going to set the DFSR membership properties on these. I'm going to answer yes to that. And this is just adding that staging folder and staging quota. And we'll go back to our space here again and refresh this node. There we go. We see server pop in. And again, everything looks like it's supposed to here. There's the local space, the name of the servers. Here's the connections, just like we spoke about. Here's the replicated folders. Unfortunately, it is in the correct namespace. And so now we could actually see if we go to DC1. Okay, so let's just see if we can replicate something in these namespaces here. So I'm going to go to the actual storage level. Remember, this was in the path E namespace 1. And we're going to make a new text folder in client 1. I'm just going to call it client one and go back up here, do the same thing in server one, new text document. And we should be able to see that. Let's log into Tucson DC two. Let's see how long it takes to get over there. Ah, it's already there. Okay. DFS is working. So I hope you find that useful. Again, look for the scripts down below. Please make sure to subscribe. You can look for the playlist for the other videos in this DFS series above. All right. Thank you very much.